Obligatory on mobile excuse format. Quick background. I work nights am usually out by 6am, but on this day my replacement arrived late. I managed to get only a few hours of sleep, because family started showing to help prepare for Thanksgiving dinner. After Thanksgiving dinner my GF and her family wanted to go Black Friday shopping. They came by for me, and I still only had a few hours of sleep in me. While in a store I saw a tiny, two-person, bench in the shoe section. I took a seat. No one was sitting there, or in any of the other three benches so figured it wouldn't be an issue. Employee, excuse me. Me, I'm sorry. Shifting because I figure I'm in her way. Employee, no, these seats are for trying on shoes. I need you to move. Me, I'm sorry, I saw these were empty so I. Employee, well you have to move. I used to work retail so I'm always respectful and try to make things easier for retail workers. Between being tired and the way she approached things I went a different route. Me, fine, reaching out to the nearest shoe, a heel. Do you have these in a men's 11? Employee, that's a woman's shoe. Me, it'll take that as a no then. Reaching for another, what about this O? Oh? The employee ended up walking away. Maybe the crazy shoppers had gotten to her, but no one was even glancing at the shoes. If the story doesn't fit feel free to redirect me. Went to a home improvement store yesterday to buy some paint and a few other supplies. It was far busier than I expected, but I had 5 items, so I was able to go to the 6 items or less express lane. While standing in line, I saw limited edition Vortman wafer seasonal flavors. They are my husband's favorite cookie and were also his late dad's favorite cookies. So I couldn't pass them up. I got 2 different kinds and put them on the conveyor. This older gentleman, so proud of himself, declares, now you've got 7 items. You can only have 6 items. He said this so quickly that I realized he had already counted the number of items I had, which is ridiculous. It's not like I came up with 20 things. Instead of starting something, I joked that they shouldn't put cookies by the register if they wanted everyone to stick to the letter of the law and smiled at him. 6 items per transaction. I don't make the rules. He said as he pointed to the sign. You're really that upset that I'll be buying 7 things at once. You have to draw the line somewhere. When the cashier rung me up, I moved one package of cookies and told her not to ring that one up. I looked back at the dude to see his self-righteous smug and gave him one right back. As soon as I was bagged up and paid, I had her ring up the other package of cookies and paid for them as well. I turned to him and said, thanks for keeping me honest, and walked fairly quickly to my car. I was in a lecture theatre where it's laid out where the person at the end of the row has to climb or push past people to get out and usually people will stand up and let you past, but one guy was being a duck and wouldn't get up whenever I needed to get out. The first time he said this, I awkwardly clambered over his legs to get out, so when I came back, to sit in my seat I said excuse me please, and the guy said the same thing, so I just said guy you gotta move, and he just shook his head. A little context, it was raining today and, so the ground was very muddy, and because of this my shoes were also very muddy. So I simply said okay, and I climbed over him, using one of my muddy shoes, to step on his legs and I pushed over him leaving a bunch of dirt all over his trousers where I stepped was probably a duck move, but I don't care it was a good moment for me. I used to work for a government contractor that was contracted to run computer simulations at a training academy. This contractor was super strict for start times. Before we'd run a scenario, we'd have to be in our chairs and ready to go 5 minutes before the estimated start time. The first scenario didn't start until 10 minutes past 7am, but they would give you a point for being even 1 second past 7am for check-in. Very often, there is a line at the front gate for the security check and train crossings operating at random times. One morning I had a train stop at the crossing for several minutes. I haul but to try and get to work on time and sprint through the doorway panting at 7 hours, 0 minutes and 3 seconds 3 seconds late, but I'm here. Unfortunately, we had a super strict and socially awkward supervisor that day who loudly declared that I was 3 seconds late and earned a point. Slightly irritated, I said great, I'll be sure to deduct those 3 seconds from my time cut. 
the online time code system only accepts time in quarter hour increments. You'll lose 15 minutes, not 3 seconds. Great, I say. I'm going upstairs for 14 minutes to get a breakfast sandwich. I'll be back just after the first scenario begins. This effectively means someone from the group of people waiting to see if they can go home as they schedule more people than they need to ensure we have the amount of people we need to run would have to run the first scenario since I won't be paid until 5 minutes after the first scenario starts. Once a scenario begins, we don't switch people around. So I got the whole first run off, which was about 48 minutes long, and the normal 30 minute break between runs, because the supervisor cared about 3 seconds. TL, doctor, I was 3 seconds late, manager said I won't get paid for 15 minutes due to system limitations, so I cost the company extra money, and got 1 hour paid breakfast break. Today, as you guys probably know, is Black Friday. I purchased a Nintendo DSi, and I'm pretty happy about it. However, it didn't come with a stylus. No matter, I thought. I can pick one up at shop one is there 99p there, I've seen them. Also, I'll use my debit card to pay as I've got no cash on me, and it was fine when I bought a 1.99 CD a few weeks ago. So I go up to the desk, ask for a stylus and they say 99p. I take out my card and the guy behind the counter says in a snooty tone, we can't accept card payments under 10. You'll have to go somewhere else, or buy something to increase your total. I know for a fact he was bsing me, because my friend used to work there, and he said that employees make more money if they sell old stock such as old games etc. So, I settle on Mortal Kombat X as I know exactly what to do. I buy it, and the stylus, and go on my bike around the block, and go sit on a bench for about 15 minutes. I then return to shop 1, and say to the same snooty guy, who looked confused af, I've just been to shop 2 for Black Friday deals, and I've just got Mortal Kombat 11, and so I don't need Mortal Kombat X anymore. Could I get a refund? The employee looks at me confused then gives me a look of are you freaking kidding me and says okay. I'll need your card I guess. I then had the 11 from Mortal Kombat X put back on my card. Normally, I wouldn't give a crap, but this guy was really snooty and tried to make me spend more money than I had to, so I exposed a loophole in his place of work. This story is a bit dated. In 2001 I got my first cell phone from AT&T, so I could add an international calling plan to speak to my girlfriend who was living overseas at the time, every day at a reasonable price. I got unlimited calls and texts for $40 month with the international plan for an extra $15 month and a new Nokia phone. Life went on without incident until one day in 2003 I got a monthly bill from AT&T for $1300 instead of my normal $55. I called them immediately to find out what was going on. That's when I was informed that my dollar sign 55 month deal was a special promotion associated with my contract and now that my 2 year contract had expired I was paying the base rate again. Notably they'd provided me no advanced notice of the change. They offered to re-sign me up for a new 2 year contract and retroactively applied to my $1300 bill so it would go back to $55. I was pissed, but I was forced to agree to their new contract, because I couldn't pay $1300. Once the bill was changed and paid, however, I called back up, and cancelled the contract, and paid the $100 early cancellation fee thereby saving $1150, and ridding myself of any association with those jerks. I spent the next 5 years actively lobbying all my friends and family to drop AT&T and all its affiliates for home, mobile and TV services. Can't be happy enough with a regular paying customer unless they signed away their soul to you via contract? F that. A few years ago I was a freshman in a small university. The usual history professor was the acting dean of arts, so the university hired a professor on a year long, potentially renewable, contract to teach the courses instead. This professor had experience teaching graduate programs and you could tell they struggled with teaching history 101. But overall the first semester went without a hitch, they were pretty well liked, students were enjoying themselves, and doing pretty well. 
However, in my department March is the crunch season. People get swamped with projects, recitals, concerts, presentations, ECT, so it's not uncommon for students not to do the homework or readings. So sure enough when March hit, one class not a single person did the homework. No one did the reading and we couldn't really do a class discussion. The professor was furious. I don't know what clicked in them, or they were just having a bad day, but in my time at schools I still haven't seen such an unprofessional display. They yelled things such as you should all be mature enough you're not in high school anymore ya day ya da But one quote stuck in every own's mind. I am not your teacher. I don't teach you, I guide your discussions, and provide professional insight. I am not your teacher. Needless to say the class paying 8k in tuition a semester was not pleased at this comment. But as the semester was ending, we bit our tongues and just waited. While the rest of the semester went by, all was fine until the class received course evaluations. For context, my university makes every class do anonymous course evaluations at the end of the semester that the university takes very seriously. As in black envelope given to the administration the teacher doesn't even get to look at them serious. And this is where we get to the malicious compliance. While the form has many questions regarding the class, one of them stood out to us. Hash 3. How well does this professor perform as a, my university's teacher? Well most of us made some glances at each other while filling out this form. After all they made it very very clear that they were not our teacher. All the additional written comment slots were also filled with comments explaining how they made it very clear that they weren't our teacher and should not be referred to as such. Because the forms were anonymous we never got to see or hear any reactions, but it is good to note that their contract did not get renewed for the following year. Thank you for watching, if you enjoyed this video, a like and a comment would mean a lot in YouTube's world, share with us, if you would have done things differently, and don't forget to support the original authors with an upvote, links are in the description. Peace out, and catch you tomorrow.